Yeah, I, I would say about this bill, it's better than nothing, but it's too little uh, and too late uh, to address the misery, the cost of living misery and the energy poverty that has been inflicted on huge swathes of our population since the cost of living crisis uh, took off. Um, people before profit put, I think, the first cost of living motion to the Dáil at the outset of the crisis in October uh, 2021, uh, looking for measures to be taken to uh, control uh, the price of uh, energy, um, and the government uh, resisted. Uh, and really, it was only when the European Union finally acknowledged that there was profiteering going on that the government began to soften up to the idea that some sort of windfall tax uh, might be uh, acceptable. But prior to that point, when some of us were screaming for measures to be taken over the profiteering of these energy companies, uh, the government was finding excuses around uh, the need not to interfere with the market. The usual mantra uh, about not interfering with the market. Now, we need to understand what that has meant in human terms over the last couple of years. The ESRI, not a left-wing think tank, uh, did a report on energy poverty that came out in the middle of last year suggesting that 29% of the people in this country are suffering, suffering energy poverty. Uh, and we need to understand what energy poverty means. That means that people do not turn on the heating or the hot water to an extent that is detrimental to their health. That's what it means. Uh, so people, older people, vulnerable people, less well-off people, shivering in the cold, but terrified to turn on the electricity, to turn on the heating, to use the hot water, because they mightn't be able to pay the bills. That is what all this is about, and it happened at the same time that the energy companies, both internationally and domestically here in Ireland, were uh, enjoying a profits bonanza, an absolutely unprecedented, extraordinary profits bonanza. Uh, when the figures came out for 2021 for ESB, that they had recorded profits for that year of 679 million, we were all, our jaws all dropped. That was a major, major increase on what had happened previously. But then 2022 comes along and these already staggering profits jump to 847 million euro. All the time, while tens and tens of thousands of people, nearly 30% of the population, are suffering energy poverty, and even those who are not suffering energy poverty are being crippled uh, with these uh, extraordinary uh, bills. But then it gets worse uh, in 2023, when the first six months of the year, the ESB records profits of 676 million. In other words, in the first six months of this year, the ESB recorded profits pretty much equivalent to what they enjoyed in the entire year in 2021, which were already an extraordinary increase on previous profits. So we are talking about an absolutely enormous profits bonanza. That's just the ESB, the state-owned company. Obviously, uh, other private companies seeing uh, similar increases. And then, of course, on an international scale, utterly sickening profits being made by uh, BP, uh, BP, British Petroleum, for example, who made nearly seven billion in profit in the second quarter of 2022, the second highest quarterly profit in its history. Um, uh, BP, Shell, Total, all making absolutely billions. Shell recorded in that period profits of nearly 10 billion between April and June of 2022. I mean, absolutely, you just couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, so the, the shareholders in those companies enjoying a, a bonanza of dividends, getting richer as people shiver with the cold and are terrified to turn on uh, the heating and uh, the hot water. Uh, now, it's very important to say, and this is relevant to the, the details of the bill, 
You see, this was profiteering on top of profiteering, which could only occur because of the EU demand, which our government enthusiastically went along for, for so-called liberalisation of the energy market from uh, the uh, 1990s onwards. Um, Liberalisation competition was supposed to, according to the mantra which was used to justify it at the time, was going to benefit the consumer. It was going to lead to lower prices. This was the ideological claptrap that was used to justify uh, privatisation or market liberalisation of energy. The public was going to benefit. But what was the reality? Even before the recent cost of living crisis and the Ukraine war. Well, in Europe, between 1994, when the liberalisation began, and 2014, average consumer electricity prices in the EU15 increased by 40%. For, um, in Ireland, though, far exceeding this, I mean, 40% increase after liberalisation, which was supposed to benefit the consumer, is shocking enough. In the same period, the prices increased in Ireland by, guess what, 267%. 267%. A measure that was supposed to reduce prices saw them increase by 267% long, long before the war in Ukraine hit. But that liberalisation then allows them to pile profiteering on top of profiteering because there is no control over them when they decide to benefit from the crisis. It's a classic instance of what Naomi Klein called the shock doctrine. Uh, never let a good crisis uh, opportunity uh, pass you by when you can exploit it to make profits at the expense of ordinary people. And that is what the energy uh, companies uh, have uh, done. Uh, you look at the prepay energy in this country, dominated by three multi-millionaires and one billionaire. Uh, the richest of which has a personal wealth of 8 billion euro, which must have dramatically increased uh, over the last uh, two years, while ordinary people are suffering. So the government, faced with this naked, brazen profiteering, resulting from the disastrous, ideologically dr driven decision to liberalise uh, the markets, uh, what did they do? They dragged their heels, they find excuses for doing nothing for the last two years while ordinary people suffer, and then finally, finally, when they are dragged, kicking and screaming, they come up with this bill, and then what does this bill do? It picks out a window, window for the cap on market revenues between December of last year and June of this year. That's the window it covers for basically six months of a uh, cost of living hike in prices that has gone on for more than two years. Uh, so better than nothing to tax the extraordinary super profits, but only for six months. Only for six months. And then the other element of it, the temporary solidarity contribution. Now again, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I read the bill, yes, it covers 2022 and 2023, uh, but it is only when profits are over 20% of the baseline year of profits for the four previous years. That's my understanding of it. If the minister can correct me. Now, what does that mean? That means they are allowing for 20% super profits in the period of the cost of living, and only when those super profits are achieved will there be some tax imposed on anything above the 20%. Uh, the 20 if you take ESB profits for that period, which I've just mentioned, which were up 30% uh, on the previous year, does, how much of those profits are actually going to be captured? How much is, abs is actually going to be captured? Now, to my mind, given that they already had been hiking up prices for the previous two decades, right, and crippling people with higher and higher energy prices every year, and then took advantage of the, the war in Ukraine, the cost of living crisis, to jack up prices further, why would we not wish to capture every single cent of surplus or excess profits uh, uh, in order to put back uh, and to alleviate the cost of living misery that is being suffered by ordinary people. I don't so see why we should allow them 20% above the baseline of the previous uh, four years before the 
uh, temporary solidarity contribution uh, comes in. Um, we'll have to go trawl over the detail of this when we get to the, uh, uh, to the next stage, but it does seem to me as if the government has done the least possible, the least possible uh, in terms of cap capturing the super staggering obscene windfall uh, profits which have been generated at uh, the cost of a huge misery, hardship, suffering, worrying, uh, and so on for huge, uh, for huge numbers of uh, people. Lastly, I would say it shouldn't be just energy uh, that where we are imposing these windfall taxes. Surely we should be doing the same to the banks given the profits uh, bonanza they've enjoyed as a result of the interest rate hikes, which are crippling, crippling tens of thousands of mortgage holders at the moment, but the bank shareholders are making a fortune. Uh, they've hit the jackpot at the expense of mortgage, uh, mortgage holders. So one person's cost of living misery, where they may not be able to actually make the mortgage repayments for their home, is another purple person's bank uh, share dividend bonanza. Uh, the poor, literally getting poorer, while some get uh, richer. Now it seems to me that the inescapable logic, when you look at these two aspects, and there's a lot more we could talk about, of the cost of living crisis, that rampant profiteering, and when you look at the evolution that has led to this, the so-called liberalisation of energy uh, markets, to me the inescapable, inescapable, uh, conclusion one has to draw is that we need to take energy back under full public control and as was the case with the ESB until, the liberalis until its liberalisation in 2001, uh, well it began earlier to some degree with the full liberalisation, the removal of the break-even principle by which it operated previously is to reinstate that principle. Or to, for it to operate on a not-for-profit basis with its main uh, motivation to be to deliver affordable energy for people uh, in the interests of our society and fairness and not in the interests uh, of making profits and the so-called uh, market.